Right, so it's lovely today to be speaking with Emma McKendrick of Downhouse. So Emma, <laughs> nice to see you. Okay, and, and you. <laughs> now, Emma, you've been in girls' education for a time now, a time. And um, can you, I mean, say, I mean, how do you think girls' education is faring? Do you know, I, actually, I think it is faring pretty well. I mean, there is always a place, I think, for, for really good quality girls' education. I think there's a place for, you know, a variety of education, but certainly for girls' education. And when I look at some of the, the really fantastic, innovative things that are being done in, in girls' schools in terms of, you know, partnerships across the world, contributions they're making to, to uh, the, the, the communities that they're in, as well as delivering a really good quality education for the girls and their care, you know, I, I think they're doing really well, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I, I see a future and a place for girls' education moving forward. And it's parental choice as well. I mean, parents have more choices if there are different types of schools. Yeah, and, and I think there are many children for whom a girl's education or, or indeed a boy's education is absolutely right there are some who will thrive equally well in either but having that choice is incredibly important and, and you know for me giving girls the opportunity to grow in their own time in their own way build their confidence um it's wonderful to do that in a girl's setting with some fantastic alumni role models and and staff role models um, and and then you have a huge pride in the young women who come out at the, the end so uh, you know that's the real testament I think. Yeah. And you're extending at Downhouse aren't you because you're extending the reach of girls education out to um, Oman. We, we are we're, we're just in the process of, of setting up a school in, in Muscat mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it will be actually the first all-girls school set up by a girls school uh, mm. in that part of the, the world. Um, and there's no doubt that there is a, a real appetite for it, actually, and, and that the Amanis see it as very forward-looking and as supporting mm. uh, women growing. And, and certainly in Amman, they have a very um, supportive view of, of getting lots of women into tertiary education. Yes. Uh, and uh, so we're really excited about that actually and about the links that will exist between the UK and Oman yeah. uh, we're actually seeing that Dan has culture mm. uh, you know albeit respectful to to the Omani culture mm -hmm. so that's that sort of empowering of of young women I suppose but but within a global context a global context being created by the links between the two I mean do you do you see that impacting those global links impacting on on downhouse what do you do already in fact in terms of global links yeah I, I mean I I'm a passionate believer that actually we want our young women or all our young people to have a really good global outlook and and actually we uh, as a world, there are so many challenges ahead for us and we have to work together as a you know, united global community and in our own way, creating links with schools overseas and, and developing schools overseas it is so important. We, we've got about 17 link schools across right. the globe, mm. um, from Sweden uh, to, you know, Holland to mm. New Zealand to India, um, Argentina, mm. and our children have the opportunity to go and spend time over there. And, and we have the the Indian students, the Argentinian students, etc., come back and spend time with us in the boarding house. Mm. And we learn such a lot. It's not just the individual pupils taking the exchange, but that ripple effect mm. is enormous. And if that helps to build a greater global understanding even in yes. a small way it's it's got to be worthwhile i mean 17 schools that's a that's that's a lot i mean that covers a lot of the world different ways i mean how, how do you manage that what do do your girls go out for a period of a few weeks or how, how does that work 
Yep, they, they go roughly about the age of uh, year 10, so 15, 16, or, mm-hmm. or in the lower six. Yeah. And they will spend anything. So perhaps if it's Sweden, it might be a week. And, mm-hmm. and that's very much a, a sort of science exchange mm-hmm. that, that we've had. But if they go to India or South Africa, Australia, it might be four or five weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's often in our holiday time. Yes, but it could be it could coincide with term time there. Yes. For them. Yeah. 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 Uh, so they get a real experience of time with the family, but also time in school. Mm-hmm. And we have the students coming back, spending four or five weeks in our boarding houses, mm-hmm. um, but perhaps going home with the families at weekends. So they get a, an understanding of you know, what it's like to live in a, in a mm-hmm. British family. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it's one of my passions that that global interaction because I just think we learn so much from being with other people. We learn about that openness, being with other people, and that mixture as you're describing of of families and schools and 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 getting that you know, working. I mean, I will say schools have not had an easy time of it over the past year or so. I mean, how? What's your impression of how? independent schools perhaps um with the sometimes the greater freedoms that they have but how are they faring in in this time in the uk and from your experience overseas as well yeah i i think you're right it's been a really tough time but i'm i'm full of admiration actually for the way in which schools uh, our teachers our pupils have just got behind online learning and managed that transition with incredible sort of yeah. deafness, if, if, if you like, and you suddenly see, you know, the creativity that comes out mm-hmm. from uh, the teachers and the pupils and their responsiveness. So although it is, it's been tough and as no doubt it's been challenging, mm-hmm. the creativity that people have shown has been phenomenal actually. And, and and actually, I don't think that global interaction has stopped. If anything, yes. people have looked at ways in which they can now harness the technology mm-hmm. to perhaps do even more than they, they thought. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, economically, you, you can't ignore the economic impact mm-hmm. that it's had on people. And, and uh, so there are probably a few more tough months uh, mm-hmm. ahead as well, I think. Mm-hmm. And... I mean, undoubtedly that's that's the case. But going back to a point you're making earlier about that connection, those global connections and, and UK schools uh, connecting, and even I suppose what you're doing in Down House, Muscat, uh, people do say that the UK education has a global reputation. I mean, would you say that that's warranted? Would you, how would you see that? Particularly having lived and worked within the the UK system? I think yeah at its best yes absolutely Mm -hmm. Um, I think it is because it is an education which not just focuses on the rigour academically and that doesn't mean in that answer I imply that we haven't got lots we can learn and embrace from Mm -hmm. other systems I think there are you know you you should never stop learning from, Mm -hmm. from others but what I, I love about the UK education system, and I think others do too, is that it is, it, it's holistic. Mm. So it is looking at not just the academic delivery and inquiry, curiosity, mm. but it is actually developing the whole person and that leadership and, and discussion and presentation and, and so much more around those soft skills mm. um, and that communication that is really important in our mm. in our world actually well essential uh, in fact yeah. i mean if you think about the skills that people are going to need for moving forward you're being able to interact with others to understand to have empathy I and mean, all of those and and I, I i would totally agree with you that the that draw the lure of the holistic education is what brings people um, to the uk and and i think it's probably been the success of of UK schools throughout the world although as you say this is downhouses Muscat is not about imposing a system is it it's about working with with within the context 
Yeah, and, and it's very important that one is respectful mm. of the context in which you're working. So it's uh, one hopes if, if, if one gets it right that you get the yeah. best of both. So you bring yeah. the, the best of the UK mm. and harness what's out in, in, in Moscow and that we learn from that actually. Yes. And I think that's the exciting yeah. bit, you know, yes. to be able to say, gosh, we yeah. can improve and develop. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is. It's really exciting. <laughs> Can't uh, wait to see how it develops. You know, yeah, really it, is, it is, and and you know, for our teachers actually to mm -hmm. be able to see others teaching, and, mm -hmm. and we just done some, or just about to do some, uh, what's called virtual teacher exchanges, oh, yes. and mm -hmm. swap into each other's classrooms. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, how wonderful is that to, yes. to, to explore? Yes. Oh, it's brilliant! It's brilliant. So yeah. final question, if you mm. could look into a crystal ball and you could look five years into the future and you could you could have this oversight of, of what was happening in UK education and in the world more generally in education, you know, what would you like to see there? Gosh, what I'd like to see is greater global collaboration. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see us take everything we've learned from the pandemic in terms of using technology to the good mm -hmm. and actually harnessing that and how do we build and develop international relations mm -hmm. better, mm -hmm. uh, both for our young people, for our teachers. Um, how do we use the, the technology to reach out to those who don't have access to education? Mm -hmm. um, and that we're, you know, there is a much greater sharing of expertise and getting out into reaches of of the world and our own country and and sharing more so we're, we're lifting the whole yeah. sort of educational experience for young people up so yes. that's my slightly idealistic view but I, oh I i'll buy into I that though emma <laughs> <laughs> i'll go for that yes yeah but but we have to don't we we have to start with that and yes. say so, Actually, yes. we, we want to make a difference and, yes. and we've got scope to do that. That's right. And if we don't think it, if we don't believe it, then we will. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, look, thank you so much. I've so enjoyed this conversation. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, I look forward to speaking again. Certainly will. Thank you, Helen. <laughs>